All right. So we are at the UMP class and, and ethnicity module or ethnicity and class module rather. And um, what we're going to start off with is me just sharing the methodology of how I studied this topic. So it started off with just verse by verse reading through the Bible. I started in Genesis and my plan was just keep going through the Bible verse by verse and trying to see how does God speak about ethnicity and how does God speak about class. And my goal was to try and find a biblical framework for thinking about these things and for talking about these things and also thinking what are God's goals for ethnicity and class? Like these are things that he knows are out there, even, even if say things like race or class to an extent are just social constructs. What is God's plan for them? What's he going to, what's he going to do with them? And I was a, aware that race is a modern construct so as I was reading through the Bible, I was trying to kind of empty my mind of any kind of idea of race, quote unquote, and instead think, how does Moses perceive people? And how does the Holy Spirit through Moses perceive and communicate and describe people? And as, and as I was doing this, I was compiling a list. So every time I saw something in the Bible and I thought, oh, that, that applies, I would note it down and make some notes on it. And in the end, I had a massive list just in Genesis. So the size of the list I had was a bit closer to the size of the list I thought I was going to get going through the first half of the Old Testament. And in the end, Genesis had so much stuff in it. And I was like, rah, this stuff would be impossible to communicate with people. So I was like, let me get all the different things that I've listed, create a title for each one, and then try and work out how I can squish all those separate titles, all those separate headings into maybe like 10 or 15 headings. So to see where the different things overlapped. So um, I did that and ended up with a much shorter list of, of points. And then for each of these Bible references, for each of these Bible verses and paragraphs of verses, that said something about either class, as in social class, or about ethnicity, I then did exegesis of them. So I started off reading them in Hebrew, studying them in Hebrew. Then um, that included doing word studies. But something that's really key here is doing diachronic word studies. So what that means is seeing how was this Hebrew word used in Moses' day? And, and 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 then being like, and how was it used in, say, like the time of the exile? Because how a Hebrew word was used in Moses' day is not necessarily the same as how it was used in the time of the exile. So it was important to not just pick the Hebrew word that I like to be like, oh, this Hebrew word has four different uh, meanings in its semantic range. I'll pick the one that makes my point the most that I want it to make. Instead of doing that, being like, okay, in Moses's time, what did this word mean? And then something that was really important was to then look at it in the Septuagint, in the Greek translation of the Hebrew. And again, do diachronic word studies then to see when this particular word is used in the time period when the Septuagint was put together, what did this word mean? And sometimes it helped me understand what the Hebrew word meant, because you're then getting an idea of when people translated it from Hebrew into Greek, what words did they pick? Now, you've also got to be careful with that, because when you're looking at the Septuagint, you've got to realize that there's textual variance in that. And sometimes you're looking at something and thinking oh they picked this word but it's a textual variant and you'll find that the reason why they translated it that way is because they were using a textual variant that another writer didn't use so it, get, it gets a bit complicated but still i see this as an important part of the work at exegesis and then i was looking at the co-text um so as we study on the ump module on exegesis you know look at the text around the text to try and understand what it's saying. And 
Then I was also looking up cross-references in the Bible software that I was using or the Bibles that I was using. And then consulting commentaries, consulting Bible dictionaries. So looking up topics like, like slavery and seeing, well, if I, if I look up, say, the, the Anchor Yale Bible Dictionary, what research have they done on slavery so that I can get an idea already of what scholars have been understanding about ancient slavery. Um, and then looking at biblical theology and being like, okay, this is something I'm seeing at the beginning of Genesis. Is it a theme that then goes right the way through to salvation history and points to Christ and the new creation? And after doing that, also looking at uh, systematic theology um so where there's a verse that says something thinking okay in terms of systematic theology um what else does the bible say about this so these are all things that are taught on the urban ministry program exegesis module and one of the reasons why i'm explaining my method is because part of the idea of the urban ministry program is to encourage people to do their own theologizing especially when there's topics that are relevant to your community but a lot of Bible scholars haven't been talking about them. So in the UK, I'd say that class and ethnicity is relevant to a lot of us in our communities. And unfortunately, a lot of British Bible scholars haven't looked at these issues too tough. And rather than complain about that, let's just do the work ourselves to do our own theologizing about these things. Okay. What I did next in the process or rather alongside this process, was reading books on class and reading books on ethnicity. I was reading Christian authors and secular authors. And when I was reading secular authors, I wanted to see by God's common grace, um, what, what has God shown even secular authors about class and ethnicity. So this is part of our Christian tradition of plundering the Egyptians, you know, and how all truth is God's truth. And also it was so that we will be good at apologetics because I figure a lot of people these days are reading or have read a Carla's book. So I need to know that book. I need to interact with it. I need to see what a Carla's saying in terms of apologetics so that I can give a response to that. So I read books like Akala's book, Rennie Edo Lodge's book, Owen Jones's book, David Alashoga, you know, people like that who in the last few years have been popular authors about these things, but have also written at, um, at a, a, a good level as well, like at a scholarly level in terms of their research. And these authors also help me get an understanding of how has British culture responded to God's word when it comes to ethnicity and class. And it was also important that I did this in community because obviously I've got some understanding of the life experiences of being lower class in, in Britain, but I also needed to learn more from my brothers and sisters from different ethnicities. So I had a lot of informal conversations and then also started doing roundtable discussions, like formal conversations, talking about these things. And one of the things I did was try to have conversations based off of my findings in the Bible. And the reason for that was because a lot of people out there right now, when you talk, start talking about things to do with like racism, people will say, ah, oh, you're just following the world's agenda. And so I, I was like, okay, I don't want to follow the world's agenda. But what I do want to do is dive deep into the scriptures so that we can learn more about how does God want us to think about these things. So I figured... If we, if we look at scriptures to find a framework to see how does God talk about these things and then have our roundtable discussions based on that, then we're not 
no one could say, oh, you're following the world's agenda. Instead, hopefully everyone could see we're just trying to get to know God's word better and trying to honor and obey him better by being faithful to what his word tells us to do, how to live in light of what he says about ethnicity and class. Now, along the way, there were a few challenges with doing this. One challenge was that a lot of authors were reading modern notions of race into either the Bible or ancient writings. So I, I started off thinking, look, I'm pretty sure race is a modern construct. I'm pretty sure it's not an ancient construct. But then I'd read a book by someone who would say, hey, check it out. Here's the early church fathers talking about race. It was the early church that started race. And I'd be like, rah, I better check this out. And I'd look at their translations in their books and I'd be like, boy, that, that does sound quite convincing. But then when I looked it up in either Latin or in Greek, I was like, nah, the way they've translated it, they've made it sound like they're talking about race, but they're not really talking about race. So it all got very confusing. That took a lot of time. There were also plenty of Bible scholars who were reading racial categories into the Old Testament, even using terms like Negroid when they're writing about stuff in the Old Testament. And it took a lot of time to sift through that and see, wait a minute, have they got a point? And most of the time concluding, nah, they, they don't really have a point. And that was frustrating, proper frustrating. I even thought I was on my own to a certain extent until I saw that both um, Ivan Hannaford this guy, the history, race, the history of an idea in the West. When I saw that he was also pointing out that people were translating it the way, translating an ancient text the way they wanted to, to try and say that race existed in ancient times. And also Nell Painter, um, who wrote a book, um, The History of White People. And she also at, at point says it's because of the way they've translated ancient text. So anyway, that was that took up a lot of time and that was the most frustrating part of the exercise. And the other thing that was kind of hard work was this was emotionally draining. Um, there was stuff that was really hard to read, especially when I was looking at the historical aspect of how people have been treated. There were things from my from my own childhood trauma that overlapped with things that I read about how African slaves were treated at times. And having experienced, um, what's it called, classism-based trauma in my own life, it was really hard doing the research on how lower class people have been dehumanized. That was really hard going. So I had to really slow down and pace myself through that stuff. Um, there's only so much um, uh, chav, quote unquote, hate that you can read in your research before you have to just go and spend time with God and get your identity as an image bearer biblically grounded before you go back and hear how much people hate you. So that was a bit of a challenge. Now, let me just finish with this. Um, weaknesses, weaknesses to my approach. Um, I primarily looked at um, European and African and Caribbean ethnicities. I haven't done much work on Asian ethnicities. That's a big weakness to, to the work I've done. And I'm hoping that future work can resolve that. And also, this is like my first attempt at theologizing on ethnicity and class in the British context. So I expect it to have a lot of flaws and be incomplete in many ways. Really, I'm just trying to get the ball rolling and I'm hoping that I can put something out there that other people could build on. So I'm not trying to say that the studying I've done on this is the definitive thing. I'm just saying, look, this is me having a go at just going through the Bible, trying to see what it says and hoping that it will start something for other people to build on and improve. So with, with that having been said, let me just find out if there's any questions from any of you about my, about my method. 
Uh, did you say that you um, that this was based in Genesis? Uh, did, how far how far through the Bible did you get kind of doing this kind of detailed exegesis work? That is a great question. How far did I get? Um, so so far I've done the Pentateuch. Now I've looked at other stuff past the Pentateuch, but not with a fine. Um, what's it called? Fine comb or whatever you call it. Um, I've, I've only, so the Pentateuch, I feel like I've rinsed it to the, to the point that I can, but, um, and along the way there were other things like, I was like, well, hang on a minute. How, how does the Bible view skin color? And I did not find a lot of stuff about skin color in the Pentateuch. So I just had to go and look at the, um, can an Ethiopian change his skin? I had to I had to study that one just because I was like, I can't wait till I get all the way to the prophets to have that question answered. So and there's stuff in the New Testament that I looked at, particularly in terms of identity. Um, but for now, it's just the, the Pentateuch. Well, if there's no more questions, that means we can. We can dive into the, the first session.